Hi, I'm Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here at the Haas School of Business with uh, Jeremy Stanley, who's the VP of Data Science at Instacart. Welcome. Thank Jeremy. you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Jeremy, a lot of people in business school, they take an operations class, they learn about stuff like the EOQ model and, and the news vendor model, and the basic takeaway is that there are these um, unavoidable trade-offs. Right. Uh, that and most of the operations decisions are about you know where you want to be on that on that frontier, right. but data science and, and machine learning is enabling us to uh, change the nature of that trade off right yeah. by by pushing out that frontier. Yeah. Could, could you talk a little bit about how we should be thinking about um, yeah. using AI or using data science in in operations? Yeah, so I think there is a few really interesting components to it. So one is a lot of operations problems are framed as a essentially static environment where you know everything in advance. If you're a manufacturer, you can control the floor of your factory. And you know if you've got weeks of insight into the orders you need to produce, you have all of the information. There's some variance in you know, whether or not a given machine will break down and in the speed with which things move, but it's not a tremendous amount of variance. When you're in our business, uh, the chaos of shopping you know, in grocery stores and delivering, right? the variance really does accumulate. And so a big part of what deep learning and machine learning can do is to help uh, remove that variance by understanding its sources. And essentially, the models become the, the physics, right? the physical kind of environment or landscape that you're trying to optimize in. Uh, and so that's, I think, an incredibly important piece. The second one is uh, the problems themselves. So, you know, almost anything that we think about can ultimately be framed as a mixed integer programming problem. But you can't solve those at, you know, dramatic scales, right? You can only uh, come up with heuristics to try to approximate solutions to them. And so I think one of the really interesting things that we can do with machine learning is to optimize the search space. Uh, and uh, instead of having to search you know, many, many, many billions of potential combinations, can we search intelligently and search more deeply and come up with, you know, better solutions by essentially peeking, uh, you know, into the future through uh, using these kinds of algorithms. So, a lot of us talk about the sharing economy and when you think of uh, Instacart, you think of it as related to the sharing economy and a lot of companies have been lumped together uh, in this category and uh, it's generally agreed that the kind of data science issues that these companies are faced with are substantially more comple complicated than, than some of the simpler data science problems that other companies are faced with. Yeah. Um, to what extent does having a two-sided or a three-sided or even a four-sided market complicate the, the data science questions? So it, it, I think, is a tremendous source of opportunity and complexity. Um, so Instacart is a two-sided marketplace in its most simple form of uh, personal shoppers on one side going to the store, picking groceries and doing deliveries, customers on the other side ordering and receiving those deliveries. But it's more complicated because we're actually shopping in physical stores and those retailers are another key side of our marketplace. You know, what's the chance an item is on a, a given shelf or what's the best replacement for the inventory in that store? What's the layout of that store? And then the fourth side of the marketplace are the products themselves and the advertisers that are behind those products. So all of these different sides end up interacting together. Uh, and I think that you end up with you know, all pairs having very interesting problems. And then when you dig into trying to solve one of those problems, it will have implications for all four sides. And so you need to think about, measure, optimize for the joint outcomes and try to find win, 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 win you know, solutions, which are much harder than just win solutions or win-win solutions. Um, I think that the interesting context is to think about uh, the different types of on-demand services and what kind of makes them different and what makes the data science different. So if you put on one side the ride-sharing companies, the Ubers or the Lyft, they are essentially clearing an auction in real time. So you're a consumer, you're sitting there with your phone, you want a ride, and an auction is held for drivers that are free or about to be free in your, in your radius, and it's cleared immediately. And uh, if that auction doesn't clear, you don't take the ride, you take the bus or you take a cab. Instacart uh, is not an auction. Uh, if we did that and said, okay, why don't you shop for all of your groceries, and at the end, we'll try to find a shopper who's free. And if there isn't one, 
you can just go to the store anyways, you'd be pretty frustrated and it would really tie our hands. We want you to be able to place that order, you know, hours into the future, and then we want to have multiple shoppers collaborate together to be able to deliver five different orders in a sequence far more efficiently than you could deliver just one. And so because of that time delay, there's a lot more uncertainty, but there's also a lot more flexibility and tools we can deploy that do increase the complexity, and that increased complexity increases the opportunity. Then you can look at an entirely different uh, on-demand service, something like Airbnb, right? Again, it's a two-sided marketplace, but they're doing something like an auction that's gonna clear quickly because you, know, you say, I'm interested in this, it goes to the person, and they say, okay, I'll accept that, and then you're booked. It might be far out into the future, but you're booked. They need to deal with all of the uncertainty about you know, what's the inventory availability and how do you manage pricing over this very long, complex time horizon. And so they have, in some sense, more complex pricing problems than an Uber might have, uh, but they don't have the same degree of complexity in the fulfillment that we have. Um, so each of these businesses, while you might call them on demand, are very radically different. And so you've written a lot about what it takes to build a data science team, and I think talent is probably the biggest issue right now in uh, in, in, the, um, in the Valley, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, and here at the Business School, we talk a lot about um, the difficulty of uh, people with domain expertise interacting with data scientists and data science folks interacting with people in domain expertise. There aren't a lot of people like yourself who can really um, understand both worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of advice would you give to um, more business-oriented folks who are trying to build out uh, a data science team? Yeah, so um, I think that you're, you're right. This intersection of domain expertise and algorithms and computer science expertise is really kind of rare and hard to find. And we work really hard to try to interview for all of those things. So one of the things that I, that I, that I find that's really valuable is you know, we will have somebody do a take-home challenge where they're supposed to solve a specific problem, uh, they're going to submit code and predictions back to us for this problem, and we can evaluate the RMSE of their submission. But then I will get on the phone with them and I'll ask them questions about, well, you know, uh, why did you choose this instead of that? How would you put this into production? Uh, how would you change our business because of it? And it's the answers to those questions that start to help me understand you know, how mature is this individual in being able to think across kind of multiple sides of the problem that we're working on. I think for people that have a kind of more of a business background that are trying to start a team, I think the biggest risk is not being able to judge the technical skill of the people. And if the first hire that you make does not have that technical skill, that person will hire other people who do not have that technical skill. And so that first hire is really instrumental. Um, increasingly in the Valley, there are people who have been at these tech companies doing data science. They've uh, gone to start their own consulting or they're working for a VC and they're advising startups to help them make the first hire intelligently. So I think if you don't have that skill in your organization already, someone that you have through observation seen do amazing things with data and data science, get outside help uh, in order to evaluate the technical skill. Well, thanks a lot, Jeremy. Yeah, thank you so much. It's a real pleasure. Mm -hmm.